Hey guys, it's Aaron here with Kelly Outdoor Product Reviews um, with a new product I wanted to show you today. It's the Bog Death Grip Ultralight uh, Clamping Tripod Head. And so I'll tell you about it, but I wanted to tell you first what led me uh, to purchase this, why I did, and kind of the, you know, a little bit of background on why. So as you know, when you're hunting, it's important to be stable. You're not going to be able to be very successful if you're wiggling too much when you're shooting and uh, if you have too, uh, if you're not stable. So over the years I've tried so many different things. I used to always have a, a bipod connected uh, to my rifle and used to use the Harris bipods with the longer legs and uh, that way if I'm running around I could quickly sit down. Generally we're in canyon type countries and uh, our country so I could deploy the legs sit down, get a pretty quick shot with my elbows up on my knees, the rifle out uh, across the bipod, and it was pretty good. Um, that was back in the days before you really had good range finders, and so you weren't shooting all that far. So a 300, 400 yard shot was really far, and that was kind of the maximum kind of distance that you would be able to, to do very uh, consistently with that type of setup. I ended up to where I didn't really like the bipod um, on the gun. I don't like the way it carried. And so then the next step in this progression for me was I went to shooting sticks. I tried all different types of shooting sticks. I ended up settling on um, some like this. They used to be made by Stony Point, now at uh, Primos. Uh, it's called a pole cat. This is the tall version. They make them in different versions, but it's basically a... It's got uh, three sections of legs, um, and you just turn it counterclockwise, push it in, put, lock it back, and that'll adjust it so you can have one leg long, one leg short uh, to accommodate for uh, incline. Um, you can set it up pretty versatile, and you know overall, I liked it. Um, but again, when you're using this, you got your rifle and you see something standing would be tough but you know put it out here like this and you've got some pretty good stability it really makes a huge improvement over just a standing position but because it's supported this way you get some movement forward and backward and then in the back you've got a lot of movement so even if you lock it in pretty good it's equivalent to grabbing a fence post when there's not one there or uh, getting up against a tree or something. It's going to be a lot better than standing, but not nearly as good as shooting with something that's supported completely in the front and completely in the back. So my next step along the way was um, I ended up going with a tripod. I always take a tripod. I do a lot of glassing, spot and stock as my style of hunting. And so I ended up finding just a little V uh, that would had a quarter 20 type of uh, thread on it. Hooks right to the tripod adapters that I use. I use the, this is the RC2 type of adapter from Manfrotto. Um, I happen to use the 128 um, RC2 head from Manfrotto. It's a pan tilt type of head. Um, really tough, super smooth. I've been, you know, I've had, I have three or four of these heads that I've used over a lot of years and I really like them for me. They're just exactly what I'm looking for when I'm glassing. And so, but it's nice to have accessories that can that you can use. I can have my spotter on, my binos on, pull them off with a push of a button and put the next device on. So when I'm getting ready for a shot, uh, and I moved to the tripod system with this V. I just click it in, um, push it down, and it's in. And then I would take the rifle, set it across here like this, and then with my shooting sticks, I would bring this in. Because again, without something in the back, you've got a lot of, uh, you know, movement that goes on. But you can take this and get it up underneath the rear of the gun and this is the problem with it though it's like you're you I used to joke with my friends 
who would hunt with me, I got pretty good at doing this. I could set it up quick, but it's like, you know, you're using chopsticks in the back here. You're trying to, if you need to go higher, you got to widen the base of the sticks. And if there's off camber stuff, it just is a pain in the butt. One of my friends, one time he got so frustrated with it, he just threw it. But for me, I practiced with it a lot and I could get it up pretty quick. And when you do, it's just super stable because you've got your rest of here. You've got a lot of distance between the front rest and the rear rest. And when you get in, it really locks it in good. And I've made, you know, quite a few longer shots with this type of setup. Um, my kids have shot a lot of animals off of this setup and I can, you know, I can let go of it and it'll, they can come in behind it and I, I would have to tell them, don't touch it, you know, just creep in there and look and you should be right in the scope. And they've done that and they've killed a lot of stuff that way. The problem with it is after the first shot, um, it's just done. They always had one shot and that was it. A follow-up shot would be next to impossible. So, um, again, just really more cumbersome, difficult to learn, and just hard to get set up. So I was kind of on the hunt for something. I thought, what, you know, is out there? And I'd seen, um, over the years, different products. I'd seen the, the Triclops was one that was out there that one of my friends had in Arizona, and he used it and, and liked it. But they would use it just with that alone. And to me, I thought, that doesn't make any sense to me. I played with them a little bit, but it was just way too... Uh, it wasn't nearly stable enough for my taste. But this this season, I kind of thought I'd take another look at it. I'm already using this V. I've got shooting sticks in the back. And I thought if I had something that could hold the gun um, and I could get it on the target and then have my kids come in behind it, they, they might be able to be more successful seeing it and then they can just ease the sticks in behind and it, but that but that clamp would hold it you know and I wouldn't have to worry about so much about the gun being up on there so what I found was uh, bog uh, they came out with a product and they called it the death grip but everyone I had seen came with a tripod and um, I wasn't interested in that. I like my Manfrotto tripod. It's the 190. It's what I've used for years. It's a, a great tripod, super stable. And I wasn't interested in buying a whole tripod, but um, one time I was just doing a little hunting around and I found just the head was available. I bought it at Cabela's. It cost me, I think, $79. Tonight I'm looking on Bog's website and they've got it for like 60 bucks. And I, anyway, so you could get it for pretty cheap, but it's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice adapter, and it's got just one big knob on it that you can crank down. Um, to, I mean, you open it, close it, just all with this one knob. It comes with an Arca Swiss uh, adapter on the bottom, so if that's the type of uh, adapter that you're using for your tripod, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to run the uh, RC2. Uh, Manfrotto heads um, or any other type. It's it's got a quarter twenty and a three eighths, sixteen threads on the bottom, so you can you can change it. It's real versatile. So I put my uh, RC two clip on, so I can take it, pop it out of here like this, and it goes up on no problem, and it's locked in. And when you take the rifle. Um, just set it up in. I put it just in front of the magazine box right in here uh, where the recoil lug is basically. I let it find a, a balance point. You don't want it too far forward or too far backward. So right there it's balancing in well. Just crank it down. Um, you don't want to go super tight but just tight enough to grip the gun. And again you can see it's holding it by itself. So if my kids are here and I need I see a buck over there and I want to get them on it, I can do that real quick. Got my pan adjustment, my tilt, it works really well. I think out to 300, 400 yards, again, you can shoot it just like this, standalone. Um, but if you want to make a farther shot, you really need that additional stability that comes by resting the rear. 
But the, the good part about this, though, is I can find the animal for them. When That's the hardest thing for kids is finding it in the first place in the scope. So if I can have it in there and they can come up and it's locked in, and they don't have the sticks in the way, they can get up in there and they can see it, they can get ready, then I can help them get the sticks in the back to keep this from happening. You can see there's quite a bit of movement as soon as you grab it. If you're not touching it, it looks great. But the minute you start grabbing that gun, <clears throat> it just... You, you see the, the problem with it. That's where the sticks come in. So you just bring the sticks in under the rear. You can put it wherever you want. Um, my son has a tendency to roll or lean the legs forward toward the tripod leg so it's out of his way and he can get up in it on it a little better. I kind of prefer them straight down. You can have them right up here behind the pistol grip or more back here uh, by the by the sling stud, whatever you like. But there is a huge difference in the stability when you add these sticks. It's just night and day difference. I wouldn't use it really myself without it. But when I get in here now and I put a little bit of my weight on it, it's just, it takes all of that uh, instability out. It's just about as close as you can get to a bench rest out in the field. <clears throat> and so we're real pleased with it um, used it this season uh, shot uh, an elk nice bull about 600 yards it only took me a matter of minutes to get set up I had my video camera behind me on a tripod this head on this tripod and uh, the sticks it is a lot of equipment you got to practice with it but you can do it and when you do use it it makes a huge difference I mean, if you can go prone, of course you're going to go prone. But when you can't, the sagebrush that we hunt in in Idaho sometimes is <clears throat> hard to see over. And so sometimes you really are standing. Uh, most of the time we kneel down. This year I, I knelt down to make that shot. And it, like I say, it was just over 600 yards. I had to end up setting up three different times as the bull fed through different openings. But with this uh, death grip head, um, and the, the, the shooting sticks in the back, it was fantastic. I mean, it was, it was just as, as good as you can get, just about like land prone. So we're impressed with it. Uh, we'll do a review later. I'm not sure how well it'll hold up. Show you a couple things about it that I do like, um, that I notice. <clears throat> it seems to be a quality this material in here is like a rubberized stuff. It's kind of a soft touch, so it's not going to mar the finish on the gun. <clears throat> it looks to be like a cast metal of some sort. I don't know. The thing I worry about the most is how well the threads will hold up. I have a lot of these RC2 plates, so I put them on, leave them on. <clears throat> but to me, the threads don't look that great in there in that cast material. And I wonder if threading it on and off a lot uh, would end up you know, having those threads kind of fail or just uh, not not hold up. Um, this moves really easily. I, I was worried at first it would move too easy, but it really doesn't. We tried to set it up different ways. At first I had it set up this way with the knob on the right side. And then my son suggested he liked it better this way. So we turned it around and it's been fine that way too. I don't know that it really matters. But again, um, we'll see how it holds up and we'll do another review and let you know our long-term thoughts. Thanks for watching. We appreciate it. Um, like and subscribe. We'll see you.